Okay, well, if you're someone that's been following theatre in Australia at the moment, you will know that there is a very big production that has just arrived in Melbourne after a very successful seasons in Toowoomba, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth, and that is The Woman in Black, based on um, St- Susan Hills and Stephen Malatrat's original work. And this time around, it stars two people that... I guess you can almost say for the second actor now as well, as a bit of a legend of Australian stage and screen. Uh, first of all, you've got John Waters, the legendary John Waters playing Arthur Kipps. And you have Daniel McPherson playing the actor, who also ends up playing Arthur Kipps at times <laughs> as well. So it's a little bit of a weird production. Um, very, very different to the Daniel Radcliffe movie that I'm sure a lot of people um, saw a few years ago, um, The Woman in Black. But basically, this revolves around um, a haunted man, Arthur Kipps, like I said, played by John Waters, who wants his story told about this kind of weird event that happened to him um, younger when he was younger in his life. And he turns to the actor, played by Daniel McPherson, to, I guess in a way at first, just to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the actor decides that, no, this could actually be a production. And then... They proceed to act it out in front of us, um, back to when Arthur Kipps got taken to this mysterious house, um, and the things that happened to him there, and the supernatural events that have happened as a result of that. So, um, Kyle, this is a bit of a, it's a stranger production, like, we get a lot of musicals and stuff in Melbourne, um, we get a lot of serious theatre as well, and I think this kind of goes into that serious slash horror theater i guess in a sense yeah oh it it definitely is kind of an odd one um the one of the last theater shows that i saw was uh 222 uh, yeah. which oddly enough also starred daniel yeah. mcpherson yeah. <laughs> and um it, it was interesting seeing it's like two two different like ghost story um plays handled completely differently um with this one i was actually very surprised just how comedic it was yeah um i would say i was thinking afterwards it's like it's not really like a a a scary like a a ghost story with some comedy elements i'd say it's probably more of a comedy with some really scary parts in it yeah um and it's definitely a play that uh, um I guess it's kind of earned a reputation because it's been going for for quite a few years now this um this same production and it was the i believe it's the second longest running um west end production that's not a musical yeah not a musical um i think it's second only to the mousetrap and um yeah it's also weird because there's really only uh two and i guess you'd say two and a half people on stage (laughs) Um, for the entire thing, despite how many characters there are. Um, they get around this by doing this very kind of meta thing where uh, where Arthur Kipps, the char- <laughs> like I was saying, it's like there's the character Arthur Kipps and then there's the character of the actor. And later on, the actor is playing a younger Arthur Kipps while Arthur Kipps is playing everybody else. And so there's this quite a, a, a role reversal with the characters, which is really interesting as well. Um, the fact that they got such a great actor like John Waters in it, um, which this is actually the second time he's he's uh, played the part. I believe he played it about 20 years ago with uh, the last time it was in Australia. Um, and yeah, like he, he, I'd say he really carries the production um, because it's just how how well he's able to do that, and there's a bunch of bells and whistles. Like um, it, it's pretty shocking. Like it, it's one of those ones where it's like even like how how do you scare people when it's something like a ghost thing on stage? You can't yeah. do trick editing or anything like that. So just the way that they actually uh, put it together, it's it's quite a quite an impressive production. It is still really weird, and I'm not sure how I feel about the comedy element of it though. I think that. Um, I think that draws it, like drags it down a little bit for me. Uh, but, yeah, it, yeah. It, it is weird. It's one of those plays that seems to go through a whole different range of different genres. Mm-hmm. Like, um, like the comedy is there right from the very start when um, 
Arthur Kipps, like they reveal, he's, he's no actor. Like mm-hmm. he, yeah. he just he's told to act it out with suspense and just reads it like yeah. a like someone reading a form guide or yeah. something like that. So it, it's a pretty interesting production. But I think one of the things that I noticed about this was. I think that you're going to get very different things out of this play depending on what kind of person you are. Like, you and I watch horror. Mm. Um, Lee watches a lot of horror. And um, I won't put words in her mouth because she's going to review it later as well. But none of us really felt the scares. Mm. Whereas there was a couple beside me on the night and they turned to me before the play had even started and said do you know how severe the horror is in this? <laughs> um, and I said, oh, I don't know why. And the girl said, oh, I never watch horror. I've never watched a horror movie. Well, she was squealing all throughout the entire thing, like yeah. with the jump scares and things like that. And I think that's also something as well with this play is it's kind of, it's, um, there's an enigma around this play that it was one of the first kind of horror theater shows. Mm. Um, and back in those days, that was a new kind of thing. But even in the last... Well, since COVID, we've had three, maybe even four, what's kind of described horror plays here in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, so they're a thing now that is more and more frequent. So if you're a, a theatre goer and you've been to the others over the years, you probably won't get as many frights with this. Like, the, like when the woman in black appears a couple of times people will shriek like yeah. and they did in the session that we were in as well but for us we're just sitting there going <laughs> yeah so what i've sat through hostel and i've sat through <laughs> saw this is not scary in the slightest but yeah look it's i still think it's a, a great production mm. i think john waters and daniel mcpherson do an absolutely amazing job here um daniel mcpherson's been an actor that i've admired for a long long time um I was a Neighbours fan when I was growing up and he was in Neighbours and then I was a huge fan of The Bill. He went Mm. into The Bill and it was while he was in the UK and I think this is what's funny because a lot of people when we went to see 222 went, Daniel McPherson, like that guy from Neighbours is doing (laughs) theatre. Is it a pantomime? And it's like, no, he studied with some of the best theatre people when he was in the UK um, doing The Bill and he's come back to Australia as one of the, I reckon, one of the best younger kind of actors on on, in theatre and you kind of wonder what's going to happen with his career next because um, he's going to be in a big US um, feature film coming out called Land of Bad um, with Russell Crowe and Liam Hemsworth. Mm. So it's like, is he going to go to the next thing now and we're going to lose him to the States? But even John Waters, like John Waters has had an amazing career. I've seen him in Oliver. um, I've seen him in um, uh, Sound of Music. Mm. Um, But he was also a sex symbol in his early days. Back when he was doing Man from Snowy River and um, All the Rivers Run and, and stuff like that, he was a real sex symbol, like in about the same time as like Jack Thompson and all them were. Yeah. So it's like these two actors have got very similar pasts where I'm sure when John Waters started doing theatre, there would have been people going, John Waters, like the pin-up boy, why is he doing theatre? Yeah. But yeah, look, I think it, this is an actor's theatre show. Yeah. Um, these two are brilliant. Um, like you, I think the story maybe lacks a little bit and I didn't get the scares that I was promised, but look, I just think these two act the theatre down in this production. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely, you can almost say that maybe in a few years, Daniel McPherson will be playing the, uh, the older character, yeah. uh, in, in another production of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the meta element of it is, is kind of interesting. Like, it's a... Because it, it it's like a play within a play for most of it, and um, the the way that they the way that that's done makes it really kind of uh, interesting, and it really makes the audience kind of like draw on their own uh, imagination to yep. in order to picture things and in order to um, in order to believe that these guys are actually there. There's a lot of sound work in it there's a yeah. lot of kind of uh and light... kind of effects as well yeah, yeah a lot of kind of like effects there's smoke uh that, which is the most fog of it i mean i didn't see the harry potter uh stage yeah. show or anything like that but it's like yeah it's probably for a uh, for a show that's actually kind of um scaled back as far as uh the amount of actors and all that it's probably like one of the most effects heavy shows that i've ever seen the, uh, the smoke is an interesting effect too because of the way that they do it like you you kind of... We were sitting in about the middle of the theatre mm. and you see it coming towards you and you almost... 
Like at one point he's talking about um, Daniel McPherson's character's talking about choking in this fog. Yeah. And as it's coming towards you, I found myself like taking a deep <laughs> breath in case I couldn't breathe. And I know, like I've been in plays where there's been stage smoke. I know you can breathe in it. Yeah. yeah. But because of the way he was describing it, it's like. I was taking a deep breath, like, just in case I couldn't breathe in this yeah. stuff. It's Actually, like, like, you're worried that it was going to be stifling, because it yeah. was really thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that kind of thing I felt did work. Hmm. Like, um, and I think, especially, it probably helps if you have seen the Daniel Radcliffe movie, hmm. because you can imagine a lot of the things that he's describing a lot better. Hmm. So hmm. even how the marsh is in front of the house and stuff like that. I was finding I was flashing back to that... You're picturing that it. Daniel you know, Radcliffe yeah, film, yeah. Yeah, in your mind. So I, I think, like, that imagination that it kind of encourages the audience to have, it re- yeah, it really kind of plays up also the scares a little bit for, for a lot of the audience. Again, it's 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 nothing that, that we haven't seen before. But um, just even the idea that... Um, so when, when the kind of the freaky things start happening yeah the there were a lot of screams as you say there was a lot yeah. of like shrieking in the audience and, and audible gasps and stuff yep. and it was uh I, I think even just the addition of like a third person coming like coming on the stage out of nowhere like just that alone you could hear like the tension in the audience of, of people yeah, like yeah. being well the kind, first time yeah. the woman in black appeared there was people like um how do i say this without a spoiler but um she's kind of moving mm. through the audience and, and people were screaming mm. like mm. yeah just, just just that like for something so simple and yeah so i i think it, it really is a uh, uh an interesting play like how it does things so completely differently than um than uh other horror and and yeah. kind of scary scary plays are, are concerned um again the 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 way that it's a comedy, I think it kind of makes the audience a bit more like to have a bit more fun with it as well. Like yeah. it, when there's something or oh, something scary, then you can hear like the laughter afterwards and, and stuff like that. Whereas with two twenty two, it was creepy in the same kind of way, I think. But there was there was a lot more tension in the yeah. audience. It wasn't like ha 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 like two twenty two had that twist. Hmm. There was that twist that um. And I'm pretty good normally at picking twists and stuff. I didn't pick that twist. Mm-hmm. I knew something was coming, but I didn't pick that twist. Um, and there was also the one... Um, trying to think of the name of the actor. Jayla Gaia did a ghost um, one in um, Melbourne a couple of years ago as well. And that used a lot of jump scares. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is one I'll admit that I did jump during. But that was because they deliberately like had loud noises yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the one trigger for me. Even in a horror movie, a loud noise will always make yeah, me jump. Yeah, unsettling so, thing. Like this one had a lot less of that than I would than I would have expected. It was a lot more playing with light and um, yeah, like rever- like real lighting and, and stuff like that. Like it really was just when when the uh, the woman black was on stage. Like that was kind of the more like freaky thing like yeah there's yeah. one there is one part in particular like with uh when it basically pitch black and it, it comes down to like a spotlight yeah and, or a uh, like a torch and like that part did kind of like surprise me and and like if there's one part of it that did kind of shock like kind of i hate to say scare but did kind of like yeah. well geez you know that that was kind of it so there are moments in it that were that that are quite scary but um but yeah i just and, and i mean what do i know that the things the thing's been planned for uh, like 34 years. It's been translated into 12 different languages and been playing in 40 different countries to like nearly 7 million people. And who yeah. am I to say, oh, the comedy doesn't work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like it's, who am I to say that, you know? But like for me, just that was, that's, that was really the one part of it that didn't really uh, click for me. Yeah. So for people out there, if you want to go and see The Woman in Black, it is on at the Athenaeum Theatre in Melbourne until the 6th of July. Then it's going to Canberra um, for about a week. Um, Then it's going to Illawarra for, I think, five nights. And then Newcastle for five nights. And then it is going to um, the Theatre Royal in Sydney um, for about two or three weeks as well. So, uh, yeah, wherever you are in Australia, you'll get a chance to check out the Woman in Black with Daniel McPherson and John Waters.